we are in script six now. This is the last script where it will take our results and export them. But before exporting, we need to make a couple of minor changes. The first one being, uh, look at the results here. And you can see the NDBI values have you know, uh, four decimals. Some of them are even longer. And for most purposes, you just need uh, the NDBI values up to two decimals. So let's just round off these values and have a nicely formatted output. So how do we round off these values? You can see the, uh, the format function here. This is the key where it sets, extracts the NDVI value from the triplet and sets them as output. So we can now take this and format this as number. To format this, we need to use this function called format. And this runs on number and it needs a pattern. And given a pattern, it'll take the number, turn it into a string. So maybe you want to represent your numbers with uh, say uh, comma is separating thousands, or maybe you want to pad your numbers with zeros where you have one, two, three, four, up to 10, and you want the numbers to be zero, one, zero, two. So they all with both two digits. So there are many different formatting options. There's a link here, which explains the syntax and what are the different options available. So here we'll take this values uh, and we'll just say, this needs to be first passed to a number so we can run our number functions on that. And once we have the number here, we'll uh, format it and we'll use this percentage to dot to F. And this just says uh, format it with two decimals as a floating point number. So let's just run this. And if you see the output, so you can see now my NDVI values are nicely scaled here. Okay. So one of the tweaks that we want to do is that there are places where the pixel values would be masked. Maybe there is, even at the 16 day composite period, there are still cloudy pixels and the pixel value would be, would be masked. Or there are some missing data someplace. So if you encounter a null value, what Earth Engine does it, it just skips that from your output. So here, instead of 24 properties, you will get 23. And when you try to export it, you will get that as a missing column. And that's not uh, very useful. And similar, when you have masked uh, data in your uh, table, this is what happens. So I will show you a neat trick uh, to deal with null data values. So I want to show you that function first. So let's say we have a list like this say null and 0 0.2. I want to pick the first non-null values from a list. And this is very helpful where you can pick the first item, which is not null. So if it's a, a value like 0.1, it'll just pick that. But if the first value is null, it'll go to the second value. If that is null, it'll go to the third value and so on. So you can run this function, this is a reducer. So we can take this list, say reduce it with this reducer called ee reducer dot first null. And let's see what's the result of this one. So we need to print this. So you can see it printed 0 to 0.2. So it extracted the first non null values. See if the first value was 0 0.5. Let's see what happens. It'll just give you 0.5. So this is useful. Now, how can we apply this to set some null values? So what you want is that when you have a null value where there's a pixel is masked, there's cloud or missing data, you really want to set that as a no data value. So that's what we'll do. We'll set a no data value of minus 9999, you know, wherever there's a null data value in our uh, results. So I'm going to change the code slightly where I'll just say, instead of this, We'll just say NDVI is equals this. And then I'll just say, use this NDVI. So the same code as before, no changes. But now when we get this NDVI, we'll run it, pass it through this reducer where if it's null, we'll set it to minus 9999. If it's not null, it'll be just the value that was extracted. So we'll do this ee.list, take this and put it as the second one is 9999 and call the reducer. First number. Now when we run this, it should just work. 
and we'll get it for this particular the first feature here doesn't have this problem but this is the technique where if you have null data values you will you can set it to a arbitrary value like this one so now we are ready we have our final result here in the form of this time series results feature collection uh, let's just export that so the export part is fairly simple we have written the export functions before so we'll just start writing that export function we'll just export table to drive and fill out the parameters. The collection is the time series results here. The description is NDVI. Folder, I like all my exports to be in the appendant folder. A file name, you can name it as NDVI time is file format can be csv the last one selectors uh, if you are it allows you to give a list of columns that you want to export and that's useful where you just want to export a subset of columns we want all the columns so we just have this function and i can run this and start the task here and it starts a task and in less than 30 seconds you'll have your time series csv which will be a table with rows being all the farm ids and column beans the the each of the date of the modus images over here and you will get that output the great part about this is that now i can change this date range to be a longer time range maybe let's just make it 2020 and now when i run this i can export 20 years worth of ndvi data for 100 farms just as easily. And this runs in less than five minutes. So now you can start to realize the power of this platform where without downloading a single image and in just less than five minutes, you are able to uh, extract uh, this relevant data from uh, the archive. And what this also means that you can now do this on a regular basis. Say you want to monitor a bunch of farms or a bunch of uh, locations on a weekly basis. Now you can just run the script every week and you'll get this data very quickly, very fast without downloading or processing any data. So hope you enjoyed uh, this project and learned some new skills. I really encourage you to try out coding, take its script, watch the video, try to code it yourself, and then you will build your programming skills. Thank you.